Hey everyone, and welcome back to my channel. Although he felt too afraid to speak out for many years, comedian Wayne Brady is opening up once more about his longtime struggle with depression. After revealing to Entertainment Tonight in November that he suffered a breakdown, Brady points to the difficulty men have with opening up about mood disorders in a patriarchal culture that demands they hide their feelings. It's difficult for men in general, I think, because of just the way that we're raised, says Brady in the video exclusive to People News. You feel any of the negative emotions or that dark cloud settle on you, and you feel like you need to cry out or speak to someone about it. And no, I'm not going to do that because I'm a man, Brady continues. What kind of man would I sound like if I told somebody, hey, I am so sad. I'm cripplingly sad. I can't get out of bed. I just feel empty. Help me. He explains, I'd be seen as soft. That's what you're taught. That's how you were programmed. And that's what kills us. Bring Change to Mind is a nonprofit organization dedicated to erasing the stigma surrounding mental illness. In a new campaign, Hash Stronger Than Stigma, the organization aims to encourage men in particular to normalize conversations about mental health. Because admitting to having feelings of any kind can be seen as a vulnerability or weakness, the rate of suicide among men has been three to four times that of women, says Bring Change to Mind in a press release. One in four adults experiences a mental illness in a given year, yet nearly two-thirds do not seek treatment, especially men. Joining Brady in the campaign are singer-songwriter Michael Angelakos, who suffers from bipolar disorder, and Edmonton Oilers goalie Ben Scrivens, who has worked closely with people who have been diagnosed with schizophrenia. Chicago Bears wide receiver Brandon Marshall co-produced the Bring Change to Mind PSA with his wife Michi under the umbrella of the nonprofit Project 375, which they co-founded in 2011 after Marshall announced he had been diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. It's so important for us to continue this fight against the stigma placed on brain health, said Marshall in a statement. What most don't realize is this affects all of us. I love this PSA because it penetrates to the root of our men's problems, and that's asking for help and letting them know it's okay to talk about it. When Wayne Brady burst onto the scene in the late 1990s, he was a refreshing change of pace from the usual kind of entertainer. That's because he felt like a guy from another era, a performer who could do it all. He could act, he could sing, he could dance, he could do improv, like on ABC's Whose Line Is It Anyway? And he could host things. You liked him, and so did your mom and your grandma. Also, he was super handsome and bursting with charm and likability. The world of entertainment was his for the taking. But Hollywood in the late 90s and early 2000s never quite knew what to do with the man who had so many talents, tough as he was to peg to any one thing. As a result, he doesn't show up on primetime TV or in majorly high-profile gigs as much anymore. Here's what Wayne Brady has been up to. Apart from probably smiling politely and waving when somebody repeats his self-effacing Chappelle's show bit to him for the hundredth time that day, a throwback to the era of vaudeville or the Broadway-bound triple threats who could sing, dance, and act, Wayne Brady was so astonishingly talented across so many different disciplines that, ironically, the millennium-era TV and movie industry didn't have an existing project or genre of project in which it could slip the guy. So, in the summer of 2001, ABC created The Wayne Brady Show, an attempt to revive TV variety. A staple of TV in the 60s and especially the 70s, programs like The Carol Burnett Show offered a little bit of sketch comedy, a big song and dance number or two, and some interplay with a celebrity guest. In other words, a way to incorporate the talents of someone like Wayne Brady. But, alas, a hokey throwback of a past form of entertainment was still a hokey throwback of a past form of entertainment, even when it starred the likable, funny, and musical dude from Whose Line Is It Anyway? Two seasons of The Wayne Brady Show aired in the summer of 2001 and the spring of 2002 to low ratings, and ABC canceled it. Why did it fizzle out? Brady told BET that there was some disagreement with executives on what kind of show it should have been. 
ABC wanted me to be the traditional talk show host, but I really wanted to talk about the things that I liked. I am a hip hop fan. I love the culture and I grew up in it. That was something I was never allowed to express. And that's why I think this mostly lopsided view of what I did on TV emerged. I wasn't able to really be me, Brady said. While it may seem to you like Wayne Brady has inexplicably disappeared from the public sphere, that might be because you've worked a nine to five job for years and or you haven't stayed home sick in a while. If you did, then you'd know that Brady has a relatively high profile and extremely plum gig in daytime television. Since 2009, he's hosted Let's Make a Deal on CBS. It's one of only two network game shows alongside The Price is Right. And oddly enough, both shows are hosted by former cast members of ABC's late 90s improv show, Whose Line Is It Anyway? Drew Carey and Wayne Brady. So if you're missing Wayne Brady, turn on the TV if you're at home some afternoon and you'll see him help excitable people in silly costumes try to win cash and prizes by guessing what's behind door number three or trading it for what's in the box. In this long running revival of the classic game show, following in the footsteps of the great Monty Hall. Wayne Brady is an African-American man. That doesn't really have anything to do with anything in terms of Brady's talents and work history, but Brady believes that his race has both positively and negatively affected his career. In 2013, he told BET that being a black man has worked to his advantage and to his detriment depending on the project. He thinks that his ability to excel in so many different kinds of things negatively affects perceptions of him. Most people in life like things handed to them on a very digestible, easily deciphered platform. But from the time I was a child, I refused to fit into a little box, Brady said. He has to live with a tenuous piece and just be as pleased as he can with the work. I can't make everybody happy. I'll either be too white for the people who don't watch the game show, I'll be too black for people who see my live improv shows, or I won't be manly enough for the dude who is a thug. Dang, why can't Wayne Brady win? Brady has endured some personal struggles, and while those may not affect whether or not he gets cast in things, they certainly affect his ability to work. In 2014, the seemingly sunny, multi-hyphenate told Entertainment Tonight that for years, he'd been quietly and secretly battling depression. People are like, Wayne Brady's always happy. He said, no, I'm not because I'm human. 